Hi travelers, Tara here, Hidden Lotus Tarot. I'm coming to you today with a mid-month May 2016 for the sign of Capricorn. This will be Capricorn Sun Moon Rising. Um, let's see, there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff going on. Um, the planetary, I don't know what is going on with the heavens, but it has been something spectacular. We had the new moon in Taurus come in on the 6th. We still have four planets. At the beginning of the month, we had five planets in a retrograde. That was um, Mercury, Jupiter, Pluto, Mars, and Saturn. Okay, Jupiter has stationed direct. Um, and Mercury will be coming stationing direct on the 22nd, but it will still be in its shadow phase until June 7th. Um, I personally have been getting the sense that after this full moon, and I, I got to warn you guys about this full moon, uh, that's coming up this weekend, the 20th through the 22nd. It is a two-day full moon, a rare event. The first day of the full moon will be in Scorpio. The second day of the full moon will be in Sagittarius. Now, full moons are always highly, highly emotional with the being in Sagittarius, I mean, in Scorpio, it may be uber emotional. And then the next day with it falling in Sagittarius, there could be a lot of anger, either anger that's come up in you around this full moon and you're going to direct it out at someone else because Sagittarius is about things at a distance, people, places, things, um, or it could be someone directing anger at you. Now we have the moon is in Taurus uh, and Taurus moon is really kind of a steady energy. Taurus also rules the financial markets, the bull market. So if you've got some things coming up around some, you know, investments that you have or spending, you're waiting on things to come in. We know that Mercury has retrograded into Taurus as well. So there could be a holdup on getting paid, getting a payout. Um, if you owe somebody some money, maybe you haven't had the money to come, you know, your money's been delayed in coming in. So you can't make that payment. Um, this could be why maybe arguments are coming up around the full moon. <clears throat> um, but uh, Taurus rules the second house, and the second house is all about my self-worth, my self-possessions, the money that I make myself, okay, not the money that somebody else gives me, the money that I earn on my own. Um, it rules here. It's ruled by Venus, Taurus is, so that is about the income, the love, the beauty, the money, the women, okay, so there could be a, a woman in the mix. Um, maybe you are that woman. Or maybe a woman is going to play a vital, important role to you moving forward. So be on the lookout for that. Um, <clears throat> but the full moon in Scorpio over the weekend is right across the uh, astrological wheel from the house of Taurus. And the house of Scorpio, the eighth house, is all about um, the relationship. Okay, the seventh house is considered a, traditionally considered the marriage house, but that house is really about the outward appearance of one-to-one -one relationships, and also uh, about open enemies. The eighth house rules how that relationship functions, how it works, uh, how do we spend our resources or share our resources. Okay, it's about the sharing of things. That's what Scorpio, that energy, is wanting to meld into something else. Um, being able to feel things about other people or situations. So it's about the sharing. So the eighth house rules, um, taxes, death, inheritances, lottery winnings, sudden windfalls, child support, alimony. These are monies that you get from someone else or that you have to share, assets and things that you have to share. There's a dichotomy there, okay? Uh, we're going to have the, the moon was is has been in Taurus. The new moon was there in this second house of self and now we're going to have a full moon there so this is going to be an ending or a culmination but it can also be a new beginning so that's why i'm telling people to be very very cautious around the weekend of the 20 to 22nd if you don't have to have a conversation with someone okay or you don't have to work on anything that's very very important then just don't okay a couple of days is not going to kill you um <clears throat> because mercury is retrograde there could be a whole host of problems that you can't foresee all right if you absolutely have to do something or have a conversation with someone, be very, very cautious because it's a full moon. As I just said, it's about endings. You could actually say something that you don't mean and it's going to be too late to take it back. 
<clears throat> there could be arguments and fights. Someone can say something to you that pisses you off and you like to screw that and you pull your support or however that works out. So I want you to be um, cautious of that and I want you to keep that in mind as we move forward. So this is um, for Capricorn, <clears throat> mid-May 2016, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, and Rising. If this does not resonate with you, this is a general reading, then you need to go back and look at your Sun, Moon, Rising signs. Uh, keep in mind that Capricorn is traditionally ruled by Saturn, but it is sitting in Sagittarius right now. Okay? Um, and depending on where Saturn sits in your astrological chart, whatever house it falls in, that's where you've been experiencing some difficulties and some delays or just a lot of hard work. But the one thing I can say about Capricorns, I know because I'm a Capricorn rising, ambitious and we do not let too much stop us. We'll work long, hard hours, doesn't matter. We'll get knocked off the ladder, you know, but we always, if it's something that we really want and we think it's worth it, we just work for it, okay? All right, here we go. Nine cards down, Capricorn, mid-month, May 2016. Look at here, just thinking Saturn and Taurus. <laughs> oh, holy smokes. Two kings are sitting here and a queen. Well, and the moon. Well, now. Holy moly. And this seven of swords comes in to support that king of swords. This is the Aquarius card, okay? He can represent any air sign. But it, traditionally, this is the the Aquarius card. Now, I don't know what this is relating to. We're going to see right in the center. The Foundations card. The Home card. Stability. Well... Now, I have three court cards here, and this doesn't seem like an energy to me. These seem like people. Um, she's got the goat, so this represents a Capricorn woman, or it could represent any earth sign. This king, he's going to represent any water sign. Now, traditionally, he's a Piscean. Okay, but um, he's got that fish hanging around his neck, but it could represent any water sign. I don't know, and here's another Pisces, the moon. We have Venus, we have Mercury, we have Saturn, we have Mars and Uranus, we have the moon, and then Scorpio. That's the sun in Scorpio, and the moon in Aquarius. I don't know what to tell you people about this, Capricorns. Let me get a look. Okay. I think what this is saying is that for some Capricorns, all of the things that you had built up, maybe you had your hopes pinned on one thing, and it just unexpectedly fell through. Okay? It just fell through. Maybe what this card is saying is that, you know, you're, you're really not in that bad of a place. It's not the place you want to be, for sure, but it's not that bad of a place. I think you still have something that you can, quote unquote, rest upon. Nevertheless, because you haven't been able to move forward with this one thing, you have decided to perhaps take a different tact. Think about it in a different manner. Move away from that one situation, okay? And um, get away from that and move to something that's a little bit safer right now, something that would, you know, be better for you to focus your energies on. But now this King of Swords sits here. And whenever I see the King of Swords, I look at the stance of the person on the card, the image on the card, and this is somebody who's blocking um, 
as I said, this could be an air sign. But this I have a bunch of Aquarius. This represents Aquarius. So maybe some of you Capricorns are dealing with an Aquarian person or someone with the qualities of the Aquarian person. I'm not getting the energy that this person is like Libra, fair and balanced. I'm getting the energy like this person is someone rather difficult to deal with. Um, and it's like, you know, you say, well, okay, I can't, I know I can't go this way. So I'm going to try to, you know, maneuver and do something different. But this person's blocking you. Okay. This person is a mastermind. And, you know, the energy coming off the card, it's like the person says that I can wait forever. I can, I can wait forever. And I don't like that. Um, Something sudden has occurred, and it's like something occurred with this King of Cups here surrounding the home. Now, what I have, interestingly, is I have these two kings are associated with this queen. And let me show you what I mean. The King of Swords here mirrors this Queen of Pentacles. There's something to do with the home involved between these two people or stable foundations, okay? Peace and serenity. But then with the knighting here, there's a seven, like, like this king, maybe this king has maybe the new element introduced kind of out of the blue. He showed up here in some way is affecting this queen or has some contact with the queen or... These are three different suits, but in a sense, they, because this is a reading for Capricorn, whether you are male or female, or whether it's a same sex relationship, okay, this is speaking to the energy of where you're sitting now, Capricorn, even though you've had something quite sudden come in, something unexpected, um, These two people are known to you, Capricorn. Kings and queens always know each other. Um, these are three different suits. So I would take it that perhaps these two people don't know each other. But you are what they have in common. Okay? Now, the full moon, and I just told you about this, but this full moon is also, I remember I said there were going to be some, there's some stuff coming up. There's things coming up, um, and I think I'm going to have to pull Sabila's on this because this, I don't know what the hell this is. Look, maybe some of you went on a trip and you visited this person Because what this is saying to me is this is a sudden, unexpected return. So if this is not either way you know this person, and he's either blocking you in the past, maybe he blocked you because this is the past line, past, present, and future. This person has just shown up unexpectedly as well. As well. And it is a return of both of them. Mm. which I don't think you saw coming. And now you got a hot mess on your hands. <laughs> oh, this is funny. It ain't funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it tickles me. Now, I don't know if this nighting is telling me that this person can help further you get because mm, am ambitious. And I know some Capricorns are married for money. They sure don't like raggedy people. Um, maybe what this is saying, this nighting is that this person is going to be able to help further you along in your financial goals. But that this person, and maybe he blocked you from that in the beginning, you know. Or maybe he, he knows that you're trying to get with this guy. He can help further you. And now he's trying to block you. Maybe he blocked you in the past. From trying to reach your financial goals. I don't know what this is telling me. But then what this says is that like the guy comes out of nowhere with an offer to get back together. Okay. And so either you are 
contemplating moving. The Six of Swords with the Four. You have some real fears, some doubts, and some suspicions about that. And in a sense, you would be right because this card, the one of the archaic meanings too, is that this could indicate a house move. Okay? It goes from a six to a seven. So whatever this thing is, it's an escalation. It's not a it's not a digression. It's a progression. Okay. Now he comes in to support this, and these cups come in to support him, and then this comes in to support you. I don't know what this is, Capricorn. Y'all got it going on this mid month. First thing I want to look at. And see, there's something sudden and unexpected about both of these guys. You see that, don't you? I don't know what this is trying to tell me. Taurus and Scorpio. Uh, Taurus and Scorpio. Saturn and Taurus. Something to do with money and emotions trying to move away to a foundation but there's something hidden about that it's something sudden I have this odd cross here moving away either physically or psychologically taking a trip by water something happens suddenly really kind of like an unforeseen event and then here's this guy but now they're sitting in line with each other now if this is a same-sex relationship maybe this is that you two guys get back together okay whether you are both female or whether you're both male maybe at this point in time you guys are embodying the, the energies of a king but then that would not explain who this chick is over here. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what this is. It's one, two, three cards. <clears throat> this is definitely three people. But it centers around some type of relationship. Okay. There's, there's two people here, two people here. Three people in the boat, but then sometimes this is just an allegory for a situation coming in to help move you forward wherever you want to go. I don't know why this guy's trying to has tried to block you in the past, though. I don't. Only you can answer that. But it definitely surrounds a house or home property, or the idea of stable foundations. Let's take a look first at. I want to look at this king. Now look. Two thief cards. And no matter what, when somebody steals something from you that changes you, okay, whether they've stolen your emotions, your thoughts, um, physical things from you, um, your belief in, in, you know, divine source. So that always creates a change. I don't care how you look at it. No matter what they steal, they just stole something. But at the same time, whatever this thing was, it was a positive event. And it's like you got surprised by something with this king. Okay? In the past. Maybe he left. Maybe he took something with him when he left. Okay? Um, whatever that thing was that he took. Sudden, unexpected news from someone that you know, and it's going to create some trouble for you. If you haven't already gotten it, um, it's going to be coming. Remember I just said about the arguments and stuff coming up on the full moon? People at a distance, and maybe that's what this is trying to tell me, that this guy's at a distance from you. Okay? Well, something's coming in. If it hadn't already, it's coming in. And this dog always represents someone that you know it was someone that was loyal and faithful. But there's something coming in. These are the tears. Dispiacere, the worry. The moon card. Moving away to a home, but there's some 
something not quite right here. Maybe something you don't trust. Maybe you can't get in touch with your emotions. Something has not been revealed. Now, I have the Gran Signore, the King of Hearts, like the King of Cups, but this person is in the past. Remember I said, it's like both of these guys came at the same time. Dona de Servizio, this person to you in the past was a help, and presently, if, if you have contact with them, it's helping you in some sense. Domestico. Now, this could literally be the man returning home. We see him walking in with his little bag and his hat in his hand. But this is also the collaborator. This is someone who does something behind the scenes. Now, that gives me pause on this King of Cups. Both of these guys, there's the Yardro and then the Domestico. Damn, and there's a third man that showed up. Ah, caps, y'all got it going on this month. <laughs> Someone being tied down and not being able to move. Holy smokes. Something to do with a um, relationship of trust. There's that dog again. There's that fortunate event in, in this uh Gran Signore, mm, mm, mm. they're like a soap opera. This is good. Okay, but uh, remember I said Venus and it's about a woman. So maybe in order to try to move forward, maybe you need to go get advice from somebody that you trust. Because the moon also speaks about emotions. But then I have another guy coming up, an Il Nemico. Now, I don't know if this Il Nemico has to do with this La Mica. If it, he's an Il Nemico to you, another Il Nemico, or if he's an Il Nemico to t these two guys, or, or, I don't, these are two separate people. They're not two aspects of the same person. These are two different people. And there's a third guy coming in on the scene. And it implies that you know him. Like you had some dealings with him before and you couldn't get away from him either. I don't know if this has to do with work. I don't know. It's a relationship of some sort. Oh, the only cup card I see is this one. Whatever this is, it's going to be a big shakeup. Holy smokes. And there's the emperor. That will be two fours. Okay, look, either somebody has been lying, cheating, spying. If this has to do with a home move, maybe what the cards are saying is that the person that you're dealing with in terms of maybe your loan and or uh, the realtor, you might want to double check everything. It is Mercury retrograde because there's some conversations that have been, you know, that ain't been going right, uh, that won't go right, and it's going to have to to be cautious. This is, this is really about great foresight, so being able to look ahead and see what's coming. You're not going to be able to do that with the energy of this moon. Um, and so maybe that's why you're being asked to find someone to help you See, she, this person is in between these two cards on the moon, okay? And so um, the emperor comes out. I don't know how that plays in. The emperor is all about, you know, if I look at it as a male, then that will be one, two, three, four males that have come out. But in reading it as an energy, this is about really regaining your power back. If these people are trying to thwart you in some way, or if they're confusing you. I'm not getting that you're confused, Capricorn. I'm getting that something occurs suddenly. And then it's a big old stinking mess. Like the card saying, it's something you don't see. Maybe it's a recurrence of something coming up again that you have tried to move away from. But now it's going to come back around with the full moon. 
because I have this, the card of nostalgia. Um, this is also about things in the past. This is also loosely the soulmate card. Um, it could indeed involve children. Um, whatever this thing is, there's money. There's money. Look, there's money. There's some stability. And there's some emotions. And... I don't know what to tell you about this. I want some of you, I hope some of y'all need to read because I really want to know what this is all about. Um, I was not expecting to see the El Namico. Now, this could be, because I'm looking at the cards now, trying to figure out which one of these guys is really the Gran Signore and which one of them is really the Il Nemico. But I picked this up as a third person. That doesn't sit right. This is a third person on the scene. Someone traveling, coming across water. Maybe they had to travel. Maybe you live by water. Water doesn't mean the ocean. It could be a lake. It could be a creek. It could be a riverbed. <laughs> it could be a dam. Um, you know, it, it. I don't know what this is, Capricorn. Somebody please come tell me what this is all about. Please watch that full moon because this is drama. High drama. All right. Namaste.